Hey y'all, my guest today made his Broadway <laughs> debut in Xanadu and went on to play Fierro in Wicked and a Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winning performance in Next to Normal. These days he's walking the tightrope of life as Pippin in Pippin. Please welcome Kyle Dean Massey. Hi. How you doing? Very well, Good thanks. Good to see you. Nice summer outfit. Oh, thanks. And you I know, love when someone matches nice the cool set. It's a nice cool day outside. <laughs> yeah. Disgustingly hot. Yeah. How are you? You you are you are oh my god, you're Pippin. Did you know that? You're Pippin. Yeah. That's Pippin, that's a big deal. That's yeah. like that's like history. Yeah, I'm tired all the time. Really? That's pretty much how it is. That your new state? Pretty just much. Like... Yeah, like the state of feeling like you're you were just in a car accident kind of thing. It's a <laughs> it's a really hard show. Yeah. I mean it's really fun. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm having time in my life, but it's a uh, it's it's tough. It's yeah. it's tough to do it eight times. A week. I don't think Pippin has to be hard, but this production makes the, it really 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 hard. Oh yeah yeah. <laughs> well, it's definitely this production. I mean, because they've added all the circus elements, and so you're getting thrown around and flipped around and dropped and caught and all that stuff. So you've learned all sorts of new tricks, yeah. which are probably not going to ever be useful in your life beyond <laughs> beyond playing Pippin and Pippin. I'm gonna try. Well, so yeah, I like knife Pippin. throwing. The knife throwing was tricky. Yeah. So, Definitely. Yeah. What is that going to ever come in? What, can you can you apply that to life beyond the Ooh, stage? The hell <laughs> no. You know, Terry Mann. He like went to. I just found this out. He like went to clown school like thirty years ago, and then this show came about. And he was like, "Oh yeah, I throw knives and I ride the unicycle." So <laughs> I wonder if he's been throwing knives all these years. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I, I, well, yeah. I mean, I don't he remember the wrong time. He's the one who taught knives. me to do it. <laughs> oh, he's, is, yeah. He's the Terry one who taught, me. taught you how to throw a knife. Yeah. So uh, who knows? Maybe in 30 years, someone will be like, um, can anyone throw a knife? be like, right here. What's Got the it. trick to throwing a knife and not like having it hit someone in the head? Well, <laughs> it's not like throwing any kind of ball um, because they have to launch out of your hand. So like, not, like if you've ever played baseball or football, like you put a spin on it or you follow through or even a basketball. But like this, it's just a poof. Like you kind of have to launch it out of your hand. Wow. So it's kind of... It, it it feels totally different than throwing anything else. Do you feel like a badass with that skill? Kinda. Do you feel like you're gonna walk around Times Square with a knife now, just, just in case? <laughs> like you can totally I'm take like, someone hey, down. Mess with me, I will cut you. Well, I'll throw a knife at you. Yeah. <laughs> I love picturing like you dressed like this, like like hurling knives at people. And <laughs> anyway, um, you saw the show obviously, and then you I assume get the call that they need a new Pippin. I mean, right? And yeah, and well, you're terrified. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was. I w it was the middle of pilot season, and so I was like knee deep in auditioning for pilots. And then this audition came through, and they sent over it was a packet of like 50 pages of like learning <laughs> all the so almost all the songs from the show, like four or five or six scenes from it. And I was just kind of like. For an audition? For the audition. For so you had to basically just like do the whole show. Yeah. And you did it for Diane Paulus? Was she there? Not the first time. I, I went in the first time, and um, she was. It was basically everybody but her. I think she was out of town or something. Right. So then they brought me back. Um, they put it. They put us through it. Now I hear she's a little hippy dippy. Like mm -hmm. you know, she directed hair. Obviously, it was. A yeah. Bit, but you know, everyone sort of like uh, had to become very like together. As yeah. Part of the tribe. So totally. did you experience any of that as like oh, absolutely. a replacement? So well, tell me yeah. what that's like. What would you, what'd you have to do? Well, it's unlike anything I'd ever experienced before because when all new people come into our show, they kind of have to go through this. They have to put on a little presentation, I guess you would say. Tell me about this. What is this like? Sounds um, terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it kind of was. Like for I, the cast? Yeah. Would and you, for you, her and for like the creative team. After you already had the job? After you already had the job. And what'd you have to do? Well, you have to come up with all the reasons why, because for everyone at home that doesn't realize this, Pippin is a show within a show. Right. So we're characters, so I'm a character, right. I'm Kyle Dean playing a character, playing Pippin. Right. So I had to do uh, an exercise explaining who I was as Kyle Dean playing this character who plays Pippin. You have to come up with the name. You have to come up with the backstory for, whole the, back for story, the circus performer that's Why you joined the circus. Um, wow. What your name is, you have to do a dance, you have to like... Uh, do a kiss and a slap, and it has to be oh, the wow. music. And you do a little dance for the whole cast. Yeah, and it has to be around like ten minutes. I mean, it was a it was a full out. <laughs> do you want to act out any assignment? Of that? Oh gosh, I think I wiped it from memory. <laughs> but um, what's that guy's name? Does he have a name? Michael. Michael. <laughs> Michael is my. Where did that the, come from? Well, I kind of thought that Pippin was like um, was supposed to be kind of an everyman for everyone right. watching the show. Um, and so I looked at the most popular name, boy's name in the United States, 
Um, Michael. From like 1970 to now, and it's Michael. So that's right. why I chose Michael. Is your circus performer from Arkansas? Does he say, hey, y'all? Uh, no, probably. It's hard <laughs> to get out of it. You know, it's so funny. Like, no one, I, every show I've ever been in, no one has ever had any uh, issue with my accent in right. any way, except for this show. What do you mean, issue? No one has ever been like, you're saying that word kind of weird. Like, no one has ever said that. I've, what I've, words do you say really weird? Apparently, in, in Pippin, it's every other word. Um, <laughs> I say, like, I, can't, I have a hard time even saying it. Plume? I say plume, like plume. But apparently, it's plume. Okay. <laughs> and I say okay. duck. Uh huh. Um, and I say sweep. Uh huh. And they're like, it's sweep and duck and plume. <laughs> and I get the same notes over and over and over. Never before in my life. Okay. It's weird. I never thought my accent was that. It's become a real issue. That's I, what, this is actually an intervention. Apparently. It's become a real <laughs> issue. Uh, no, I loved when you did, um, you've done two video blogs for Broadway.com. Thank you yes, for that. Normal Life, when you played Gabe yeah. and Next to Normal. Yeah. And uh, Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince. Yeah. Fresh Prince. I love that name. That was good. Um, and, and I loved hearing you say, hey, y'all. I mean, there's no, there's no replacement for y'all. Y'all. You say y'all all the time. Uh, probably a hundred times a day. Yeah. So, um, because you're a good boy from Arkansas. That's right. You're in mean New York City now. So, do you still <laughs> are you still like a nice Southern boy dealing with this world? Oh, I think so. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I don't. Do you have think... to fight to keep that sometimes? Like, you mm. know, like do you sweat? You like screaming people on the street and like do you do any of that stuff that I do when I'm furious? <laughs> <laughs> or don't are you know. just like you just I keep don't... it really cool? I don't know. I, th I feel like I'm pretty, yeah, I don't know. I th I th I th you can take the boy out of Arkansas, but you can take the Arkansas out of the boy, I guess so. Yeah. Wow. I say my mom will raise me right. That's I, I guess, I guess yeah. she did. <laughs> I guess she did. Okay, so I want to ask you about Google. So I Googled, you know, I Googled you. I like to Google people. Oh, and Make yeah? sure I'm, I'm, you know, kept up on things. And I have to nice. tell you some of your results. So when you, when you type <laughs> Caldine Massey Pippin, uh, well, yeah. you get like 285,000 Results, right? Okay. When you type Kyle Dean Massey hot, yeah. you get 430,000, which is pretty impressive. When you type Kyle Dean, this one, you know, like common searches came up, this one came up. Kyle Dean Massey bulge, bulge, B U L G. Bulge? Bulge. 1,810,000. What? This is, like a, this is like a John Hamm situation. Do you have any idea why? I know you've prepared in Broadway Bears. Maybe, Wait. maybe it's just that. I mean, you know, I, I did play Fiero That's right. for a Agreed. very long so the, time. The, the, the pants. The Fiero so pants. Maybe it's the pants. Are legendary. It might those, be Fiero. Those pants are pretty legendary. Pants. Congratulations. <laughs> because, I mean, not, not everyone has that much attention. Wrong but wait, why did them. you? I want to know why you typed because in Because when bulge. you type in Kyle Dean Massey. Oh, it's the auto thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Gay, I was like, were you just like, Kyle Dean next Massey, to normal. Bulge. You know, all the things come in. <laughs> That's crazy. It's crazy. I thought you should know. Uh, you should get your team working on that. <laughs> Get the Pippin team working on that. <laughs> Clean that up. There's no photographic evidence, by the way. Oh, we don't. Not, need, I'll, I'll keep it out there. I'm okay it's not like it. John Hamm. Okay. No, keep it out there. It's good. It's good for business. <laughs> so you have like a crazy body, and you know you you. And it's actually, okay. I follow you on Instagram, and you just like put up a photo of your. You, I mean, you put shirtless photos up. Well, I you do this intentionally. A few. I've done a few, maybe. Is like mm -hmm. Pippin like the ultimate workout? I have not really been to the gym since I've started doing that show. So you save money on the gym membership. <laughs> you just, like, I'm just membership. too tired to go. So I guess the show is is making it happen. I think it'd be funny if they had like an out of shape guy play Pippin. It'd be funny. It'd be funny. <laughs> like, you know, the concept of it, like in that mesh shirt and everything. It'd be, it'd be, be like. Mm, it's like yeah, Pippin, really, whatever. Yeah. Pippin, Michael, Pippin, whatever. So when you were a little kid growing up, in growing up in Arkansas, yeah. were you like a little scrawny kid, or like I want to hear about that boy? I want to hear about that boy. Well, I was a swimmer. I was okay. a competitive. Okay, swimmer. so you were always you were always like athletic. Yeah, yeah, I was I was nationally ranked. I was a really great swimmer. Like okay. that was my whole life was swimming. Did you want to like do that? Like, did you want to like go to the Olympics? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. did. Um, and um, when I was in high school, and, but I always had a, a really strong interest in music and, and dance. I took dance from a very young age right. and piano lessons and things like right. that. But um, I had like a, I, I, I kind of just, I, I fell in love with theater, I guess when I was like 16 or 17. So that was when I kind of started weaning myself off the, the swimming. Yes, yeah, so I want to talk about how that happened. Do you yeah. remember like 
certain shows that sort of like got your attention? Absolutely. And the first one that I went and saw at the Orpheum in Memphis was the uh, Will Rogers Follies national tour. Oh, okay. Was Sutton Foster in it? <laughs> Probably. She's she in everything, isn't she? <laughs> right. Um, that was like my first Broadway show okay. that I saw. Right. And then um, we would go and see shows at the Orpheum every once in a while. Um, but it really wasn't until I was in high school that I, I think I got like a season pass. So I saw a lot of people in shows that I've now worked with. And I was like, I loved you in Sunset Boulevard tour. <laughs> like Sarah Barry and Louis Cleal, they were in the Sunset uh -huh, Boulevard tour with uh -huh. Petula Clark. And right. I was like, yeah, I, I saw you. <laughs> I read that you were also inspired by <clears throat> lunchroom dinner theater. Yes. What, is, what does that mean? I don't, I've never How heard did you that. find this stuff out? We have a research team here. Wow, I'm impressed. Bulges, yeah, we did this thing dinner called theater. Dinner, dinner Theater. <laughs> and uh, we had this, like, lunchroom in my high school that they uh -huh. called the Commons Area. Okay. And um, we would set up a portable stage in the cafeteria. Okay. And the lunch ladies would make the dinner. Were there, like, like tablecloths and... Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that fancy, but... Were the kids into it? Like, were students in the school N into Students didn't this? go. I mean, it was mainly... At, the dinner theater was the hardest ticket in Jonesboro. It was definitely like they went on sale, and within thirty minutes, it was completely sold out. Wow. It was it had been a popular tradition for several wow. several years. Wow! Um, and it was usually it was always a play. It was never a musical, oh. and it was usually a a small cast of no more than ten people. So getting to be in the dinner theater was like wow, pretty cool. I watched your "It Gets Better" video. You made an "It Gets Better" mm -hmm. video when that whole thing was going on. Yeah, was a very sweet video. And there's B roll of you in that. Like as a little boy dancer. Yes, which yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like you're doing a big crazy move. Yeah. Uh, you have, like, you, and, and also you did, and like in 42nd Street, yes. you did a national tour. You're yeah. actually like a, like a hardcore, you kind of, you're, you're really like a triple threat. Like genuinely, <laughs> I've seen you do crazy singing, crazy dancing, crazy acting. So well, you, you, you can do it all. But what was your first like time getting on stage in school? Like what would what, you play? What'd you do? Um, we had like school, I went to a small Catholic school uh -huh. in Arkansas. Um, so we did, we had like little Christmas pageants and things like that. But for me, it was, I, I my sister, uh, took ballet class and she did the Nutcracker. Right. And I went to see, see her and I was completely obsessed with it. Completely. And I told my parents that I wanted to be in the Nutcracker. So they signed me up for ballet classes, which at the time, you know, it was like a package deal when you're five years old or six years old. So the next year, they did the Nutcracker, and I, I was in it. What about the first time you were like singing and acting? And I was sixteen or seventeen years old. And you did what? Much later, Shenandoah, Shenandoah oh, the musical. That show that no one really knows, but you do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like a sophomore in high school, and I had a, I played a Civil War soldier, and I had a single line in one song, "A penny and a wish and well, copper turned to rust." That was my line. That and was I was, that. and I, yeah, Nailed and I that. used like the stipple brush on my face, you know, so I had like, looked like I had a beard from uh -huh, being a uh -huh. prisoner of war. You went to school where? <clears throat> I went to school in Missouri, at Missouri State, uh -huh. as it's now called. And um, it was great for me. I had like that kind of weird, bizarre dance training, right? like tap dancing. Right. And I'd taken voice lessons when I was in the choir, but I didn't have any acting training and it, it just I didn't the three things did not come together for me at all uh -huh. and no schools accepted me really and yeah like no schools and um, this school were you crushed oh I was yes were like, completely crushed completely happening. crushed but this school um, at the time they don't they don't do this anymore but you would go and declare your major okay and then they would give you a year of classes and training and then you would actually audition for the BFA program so that's what I did. That's what I had to do. Huh. And um, it was great. So, and I, then I, you know, I did summer stock in the summers while I was in college. And, you know, how is summer, summer stock, stock is. You do like 10 shows a summer or something. So. Is summer stock fun or is it only like fun looking back on it? Or did you have like a blast? Yeah. Time of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Best time of my life. What was like, some, like, what was like your favorite like summer stock cast that you wish you could like just like hurl yourself back in that moment? Oh, gosh. Is I, it, don't, I, I did it two summers. Okay. And I, it would be like, Picking my favorite child if really? I had kids. Yeah, I, they were they were very different experiences. They were both in Illinois and little bitty teeny. Oh, you towns. were Danny Zuko in Greece. Was that one of them? Yes. Okay. How was yes. that? Was that fun? It was great. 
Yeah. It was that was my very first paying job. Oh. And I made ninety dollars a week nice. performing Danny Zuko. Uh -huh. And I was so excited because at that point I I mean, I probably still would have done it for free. You uh -huh. know? Um and I lived in like a shack. I really? mean there it was there were I woke up with mice in my bed several nice. times. <laughs> there were bats that circled in the in the Rough in it. Rough yeah, it was really rough, but I was like this is it. I've made it. <laughs> it's great. It was and totally everybody great. like party at night. It was like a, like a, like yeah. a big group. Like we totally did. It, it was really crazy. I mean, this was like 15 years ago. I, I didn't even have a cell phone. Like we had one phone. It was a phone booth. Right. I mean, we we had like a cafeteria, and we were surrounded by corn. We lived in these really ghetto buildings, and <laughs> it was just us. I mean, there was there were no phones. There were no TV. There were no computers. There was it was just us. And it was so those people are still. Very good friends of mine. Uh huh. So your big break was what? Getting Forty Second Street. That was like a big national tour. Yeah, right? I, guess. I mean, that was like a big. Yeah. Seems you were Billy. Yes, I was. Yeah, you know, it's weird. It's like I, th I feel like every job has kind of been a break in a weird way. Like right. I don't, I don't really feel like I skipped a lot of steps. Um, no, it wasn't I mean, like it's, yeah. It seems it, like you've worked really hard and like risen the ranks. Yeah, I did. Like there wasn't like one big leap or anything, but Forty Second Street was a big, right, a big deal because I that was right out of school and I got to travel the world. I mean, we opened in Tokyo for three months. Oh that wow! Was, that okay, was, cool. was that production? Oh cool! Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and then we came back and toured the states, and it was great. So you've done a lot now. So like you've done four Broadway shows. Yeah, uh, and they're all they all have these crazy fan bases. They and, do. Yeah. Yeah. You, you obviously were Fierro and Wicked multiple times. Now, how, how many times can you go? How is there like an age cutoff for Fierro? Or I guess not because Norbert <laughs> you know, did it first. So does that just keep it open? Can you? Is there like a certain point where you can't? I don't Fiero? know. I think maybe I've outlived my welcome over there. I've gone. I you've have been back. Like you've done it a eight lot times actually. Wow. If, yeah, or eight or nine. All, and all the could you literally do it sleeping? Like, do you could do you do that role? Like, do you know every minute? Of it? Well, you know what's crazy is that I started out in that show as understudying Fierro. Right. And there's something about when you're an understudy, at least for me, um, when you're an understudy, you you can be thrown on at any moment. Right. Like in the middle of the show, right. it, you it could have been two months since your last rehearsal. So you kind of you have to just always be ready. And for that reason. I think it's always some, tucked in a special place in my head. Right. Like there are roles that I've played for years, like next to normal. Right. Like I couldn't sing at you any songs from that show. I, I, I don't. I really. I would have a really hard time really? singing any of them. Yeah. Um, but like r roles that I understudied, I could. I feel like I could go mm. on and do it tomorrow. Hmm. So. So what do you want to do? Do you look at any careers, and say like, God, oh, I would love to like have a career like that. Ooh, come on, who do you want to be? Honestly, no, I'm so bad at this question. Really? Yeah, because I feel like all I ever really wanted to do was work. Uh -huh. I never, I actually never even thought I would make it to Broadway. I really hoped that I would, right. but I never really thought that I would. Right. Because I kind of had an uh, inauspicious beginning, uh -huh. you know, getting rejected right. at every single school. So I, I guess my standards were kind of low. Right. But, um, I just, I've always felt fortunate just to have the work that I've had, and if I can keep this going as long as I can, I'd be happy. Of course, you know, you always, you always want to find more of it, and, right. and maybe a, a little bit right. better, and, um, right. and I've got a hand in so many different things, I mean, recording, and voiceovers, and TV, and film, mm -hmm. and Broadway, and concerts, and stuff, um, and teaching, I teach quite mm -hmm. a bit, too, so I keep myself pretty busy. And so you would have been happy just in that shack in Illinois with the mice climbing on you still doing Shenandoah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> at some point, maybe like after, you know, you turn 30, you'd be like, maybe it's time to get a mousetrap. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were going to give advice to like the kid out there who's applying to schools, you know, getting rejected. I know I've heard you, your sort of like go-to word of wisdom people is to get a gym membership. <laughs> yeah, <But laughs> it's true. It's very true. Well, you know, I feel like... I, I, I feel like you kind of, you have to get into this business for, for the right reasons. Uh -huh. um, if, if you are getting into this business because you love doing it and it's really all you want to do right. and you are willing to, and you're willing to sleep in a bed with mice, right. if you're kind of right. willing to do that, um, then I, I, I kind of think that you're, you're going to be okay. Uh -huh. um, because it takes a certain amount of work and I think it takes a certain amount of persistence and... Um, 
and if you're getting into it because you're like, well, I just want to be on Broadway tomorrow, right. I think I think it's going to be tough for you. Right. So if, if you're happy just doing the work, if you're just happy performing, if you're happy learning more, you're going to automatically get better right. and you're going to rise. I think you will. I think it's inevitable. It's it's tough. It's a tough business. Yeah. You know, it yeah. is. I, I think everyone yeah. would, would agree to that. I've also heard you say that you could be a carpenter as a backup. Like, I totally could yeah. do that. So yeah. that's, that's like you're good at that? Oh, yeah. What, what's the most awesome thing you've ever built, like, with your hands? Oh, gosh. I mean, I don't, I've don't. i renovated, like, three or four apartments in the city. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, gut them, completely gut them. What if we need, like, a, a, a set built here? Could you help oh, me? I can, I can whip that could out. build, like, a cool set? Like a, yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm really good at that stuff. Can we start working on it right now? I got some supplies. <laughs> I out. think I have to get to work. <laughs> All right, you're Pippin. <laughs> Pippin and Pippin. Uh, well, thank you so much for for being here, and My congratulations! Pleasure. It's so exciting to watch uh, your, watch your career. Well, thanks, thanks for having me. I mean, I, I feel like I've seen your career from the the minute you got to New York, and it's very true. And we love having you as a video blogger. So whenever you want to, whenever you yeah, want to start filming it. filming yourself again, just go for it. <laughs> just just start. We'll put them up. Okay. Oh, well, sounds Thank good. Thank you. Everyone needs to check out Pippin at the Music Box Theater. This guy plays Pippin. Thank you, Kyle Dean. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah.